Hello friends, I am Adam Guru, working in Sheridan Institute Technology, College of Engineering. I am dealing with serving one course. Today we are going to study module 1, lecture number 4. And in this particular lecture, we are going to study the direct and indirect ranging. This slide shows the suitability of ranging when the ranging is to be carried out. So here I will write when a survey line is longer than a chain length, it is necessary to align the intermediate point on a chain line so that the measurements are along the line. The process of locating intermediate points on the survey line is known as the ranging. So there are two methods of ranging, namely direct ranging and indirect ranging. Refers to the procedure of ranging where the points A and B it, it indicates <coughs> the survey stations and C is the intermediate station. So, in order to bring the point C in line with A and B, the ranging rods which are held at C has to be moved as per the instruction by the surveyor who, who may be standing near A or near B and as per the instruction given by the surveyor the assistant has to move the ranging rod towards left or right so that the point A, C and B they are in line. So direct ranging if the first and last point are intelligible this method is possible so stations A and B in which an intermediate point C is to be located, point C is selected at a distance slightly less than a chain length. At point A and B, ranging rods are fixed, the assistant holds another ranging rod near C, surveyor positions himself approximately 2 meter behind the station A and looking along the line AB direct the assistant to move at right angles to the line AB till he aligns the ranging rod along the AB. Then surveyor instruct the assistant to mark that point and stretch the chain line along AC. We will see the actual procedure in the next slide. It refers to plan and sectional view of direct ranging. In the plan view, you will observe that A and B these are the two <coughs> survey stations whereas C is the Point to be established in between A and B. Therefore, when C is brought in line with A and B, then it is called direct ranging. We are not going for direct ranging. Our object is to measure the linear distance between the two survey stations in one straight line, not in a curved manner. Here this particular slide refers to two ranging rods and uh, the procedure how the points are to be established along a straight line. This slide refers to <coughs> pictorial view of direct ranging where the two points A and B are marked and at A the ranging rod is held similarly at point B the flag post is held. This slide refers to pictorial view of direct ranging where station A and B these are the two survey stations and C and D these are the two intermediate points and we are supposed to bring the two points C and D in line with A and B. This slide refers to the procedure of direct ranging and a picture view where the station A and B they are fixed with help of ranging rod and the flag post and the surveyor who is standing behind the point C is going to instruct the person who is standing at intermediate point along AB at near C called assistant and the surveyor is going to instruct the assistant to move towards left or right so that the points will be brought in line with A and B. This is the direct engine procedure. So after giving the instruction by the surveyor the point C was established means the point C was brought in line with A and B. Now we are interested to establish another intermediate point in between A and B. Therefore, the person called surveyor, he is standing at C and he is going to direct 
the assistant who is holding with a ranging rod near the point D. So therefore, he has to instruct that is assistant has to be instructed by the surveyor to move towards left or right so that the point D will be in line with A and B. This slide refers to procedure of direct ranging where A and B these are the two survey stations and we are interested to bring the C and D in line with A and B. So therefore after fixing the point C the surveyor is going to instruct the assistant who is holding the ranging rod at D and after getting the exact position of ranging rod along the line AB the surveyor is going to instruct the assistant by saying that whatever the position is there is fine. So this way the direct ranging is carried out at site. So whenever we are following the ranging operation we are supposed to follow the code of signals. First signal by the surveyor is rapid sweep with right hand. Then the assistant has to move considerable towards left. The second signal given by the surveyor is slow sweep with right hand. Then the assistant has to move slowly towards left. Third signal that is right arm extended by the surveyor. Then the assistant has to continuously move towards left until further signal. Fourth signal that is right arm up and move to the right. Then assistant has to do the plumb, plumb the rod towards left. Rapid sweep with left hand, then assistant has to move considerable towards right because they are facing in opposite direction. Slow sweep with left hand means assistant has to move slightly towards right. Next signal left arm extended. When the surveyor is extending his left arm, then assistant has to continuously move towards right. Next signal is left arm up and move to the right. It indicates plumb the rod towards right. Then both arm above head and brought down. The means the assistant is standing at a correct position and the ranging is correct. Next signal is both arm extended horizontally and brought down quickly means the assistant has to fix the position of arranging rod. So this is a way how to go for arranging operation. This slide refers to picture view of direct ranging. So at station A and B these are the two survey stations. So indirect or reciprocal ranging is to be carried out due to intervening ground. And because of intervening ground if the ranging rod at B is not visible from station A then reciprocal ranging may be resorted. So here it needs two assistant one at point M and another at point N where from those points both station A and B are visible. It needs one surveyor at A and another at B. To start with M and N are approximately selected say M1 and N1. Then surveyor near end A ranges person near M to position M2 such that A, M2, N1 are in line. Then surveyor at B direct person at N to move to N2 such that B, N2, M2 are in line. The process is repeated till A, M and B are in a line. This slide refers to indirect or reciprocal ranging not leveling. This slide refers to the two, two views namely sectional view and plan view. In the sectional view you will observe that the ranging rods positions are shown at A, M, N and B. So it does not mean that the points A, M, N and B they are in a line. 
so in order to bring a m and n in line with a and b we are supposed to follow the reciprocal ranging procedure then let us see the plan view of uh, reciprocal ranging let us see a and b these are the two points they are interchangeable from each other they are not seen from each other so therefore we are supposed to uh, establish the positions m1 and n1 in such a way that at m1 and n1 two assistants are standing and they will be seen from a and b then the surveyors are standing near a as well as standing near b two surveyors are there after that the surveyor who is standing near a is going to instruct the person that is assistant who is holding the ringing rod at n1 to move to the point n2 so that the line of sight will be established a n2 similarly the surveyor who is standing near b is going to instruct the person called assistant who is holding the ringing rod at m1 to come at m2 so that the line of sight established will be b m2 after that the surveyor who is standing near a he is going to instruct the assistant to move to the to come at n3 so that the ranging rod will be seen from a similarly the surveyor who is standing near b is going to instruct the person who is holding the ranging rod at m2 to come at n3 so that the line of sight established will be b m3 so similarly the procedure is re repeated so that the points a m n and b they are in line this is called indirect ranging this slide refers to procedure of direct ranging where a and b these are the two service stations and we are interested to bring the c and d in line with a and b so therefore after fixing the point c the surveyor is going to instruct the assistant who is holding the ranging rod at d and after getting the exact position of ranging rod along the line a since the ranging rod at b is not shown the surveyor is going to direct the assistant to hold the ranging rod near the point c1 similarly and the surveyor at b is going to instruct the assistant who is holding the ranging rod at d1 so that the line of sight will be established with the surveyor to bring the uh, points a c1 d1 in one line this slide refers to how to fix the intermediate point between c and b so therefore in the plan you will see d1 and d2 these are the two positions where the ranging rods are held and in order to bring the point d in line with c and b the assistant has to move his ranging rod as per the instruction given by the surveyor from b in this slide refers to picture view of indirect or reciprocal ranging wherein the points a c and d are brought in line with a and b also in the plan the point a c d and b they are shown in a one straight line hello friends i am arun guru working in sherdin stor technology college of engineering i am dealing with serving one course today we are going to study module 1 lecture number 4 and in this particular lecture we are going to study the direct and indirect ranging
So this is the procedure how to carry out the direct and indirect engine.